Hello and welcome to another Tuesday Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Betsy, I'm with Erin. She's gonna come around in just a few moments and we are, um, we are hosting this week because Linda is still off on her adventure in England. Um, I think the last couple of days they've been in Bath. And if you have ever been there, you know that it's totally magical, just the most beautiful place on earth. So I am envious of her fun time she's ha having, but I keep looking at all the photos, which are being posted on Instagram. So if you want to look at her um, photos as well, check out our Instagram page. So um, before we get into it, Erin's going to come on. <laughs> Hello, how's everyone? <laughs> so, um, you might notice as I stand next to Erin that we are very differently sized. Mm -hmm. um, she is 5'10", I am 5 foot, and this week I wore flat shoes so that I could really bring home, <laughs> home the height difference. Um, and we are going to talk today about the different patterns that work for our frames because yes. we have a lot of questions about it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, so before we get into that though, we have a couple of things that we wanted to talk to you about. The first thing is that I wanted to encourage all of you to go to our website and go to the What's New tab. So if you go to shop, there's a bunch of options on top and there's a What's New link. And I have been putting up loads of new fabrics that we are getting in. I'm still putting up fabric. We have another um, photo shoots worth of fabric downstairs. So if you are looking for the newest fabrics, that is the easiest place to find it. And I just say that because I don't know if everyone knows about the What's New tab, but any new fabrics, that's the first place they go. So um, I would check it out. There's some really nice things on there. So. And we have more that we're going to be adding soon too. Yes. I mean, we also we have more photography to do for more fabric that yep. just came in. So um, once we get all those up, uh, there'll be more for Betsy to add. <laughs> yes, yes. I have been doing a lot of fabric photo editing and uploading. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to let you all know that there are some fabulous things up there. So you should check them out. Um, another fabric that we have gotten in recently. Yes. <clears throat> is the much sought after yeah, let's pick it up yeah here. slubby black and white gingham yes so this fabric has been so popular for us um, Linda made a pair of Picasso pants out of it and we just got in a new shipment of it so if you are interested in this black and white gingham we have that for sale on the website yes yeah. so check that out mm -hmm. And then other announcements. Um, we always like to talk about So Confident every week. Um, we have a couple um, classes that we're advertising right now. Um, the one for August. September. September. <laughs> what month is it now? October. It's, okay, yes. Okay, September was the Helix Pants um, in a Ponte knit. So that class is live, ready to view. And uh, we have kits available. We have them in a gray, a black, and a pottery clay color, mm -hmm. which is beautiful assortment of colors. And then the coordinating jacket is the Haiku 2 jacket. And that is for October, the month that it is now. <laughs> um, and we still have kits available in the mustard and the black. Yes. So, so that is available still. So. This class, um, that is going to release on Friday, right? on the 7th. Um, this class is ready to watch and available. And what I wanted to say was that it's not just about making these pants, because when you look at them, you're like, it's kind of a simple pant. Mm -hmm. It's about fitting the pants, and not just these pants, but fitting just pants in general. So if you've ever had any issues with that, this is a really great mm -hmm. Um, class to have on hand because when you have it you have it forever so you can go back and you know check in with it whenever you come up a pattern that has some issues so right think it's about very, the helix pants class very comprehensive mm -hmm. and um, you'll get some great techniques out of it that's kind of that's one of our number one questions is just fitting help me fit a pattern help me fit my body so this is a great option for fitting pants yep okay so we'll take that 
Okay. All right. So Erin's going to start out with um, the patterns that work best for her, and yes. then I'll be back with mine. So. <laughs> okay. So I am going to start off talking about patterns that I think um, fit my tall frame. Um, I know we talk about, like I just mentioned, fitting a lot with, at the sewing workshop. Um, but I also think that it's really nice when you can find a pattern that just works for you. Um, maybe you just have to do a few minor tweaks to it and it's the perfect um, size, it's the perfect look for you. So I'm going to talk about the patterns that are my go-to patterns, the ones that I just um, go back to over and over again because they fit my um, height, um, they fit my build. And so um, those are the ones that I always think about when new fabrics come in and I think to myself, oh, I'm going to make the ET, for instance, because I know it's a go-to pattern that I can make up quickly. And um, for my life, that's exactly what I need. So um, I'm going to start out with the ET. Um, the ET is my favorite t-shirt pattern. Um, not only because it fits me really well in the shoulders, um, it also fits me well in the waist, and there's a lot of variety that you can do with, um, I think, the fit in through the waist and in through the hips. So the ET, straight out of the pattern, it's, um, it's fitted at the shoulders, and it has a shorter sleeve, goes in at the waist, and it has a rounded shirt tail hem. So this is an example straight out of the pattern. The way I tend to make it, I tend to make it with, um, I don't have to make any adjustments at the shoulders, but I do tend to make it a little boxier and then I um, make it straight at the hem. I think this is a very updated look. It's a look that you're seeing a lot and ready to wear. Um, it's something that you can easily tuck into your pants um, or you can also wear it um, without being tucked in. So I think it has a lot of variety, which I really like. So ET. And Erin, how tall are you? Um, I am 5'10". Okay, and I wanted to show you this one. And so um, the ET um, straight out of the pattern is a great option, but there's also a lot you can do with the ET. And so one of our tutorials that we have is called the Mesh Blocked um, ET Turtleneck. And it's um, one of my favorite things to do to the ET because I do love tunics. I like to play to my height. Um, at, at the point in my life that I am, I love my height. You know, if you would have asked me at 16, I would have given you a different answer. But, um, but I love my height. I like to play into the fact that I'm 5'10". Um, I like to celebrate it. So why not have a long tunic to lengthen the body? I think this is a great option for a lot of different people, no matter your height. Um, but it's, uh, the tutorial teaches you how to make a short turtleneck and a long sleeve and then add a mesh bottom to it. But I think this is um, kind of a, just a breezy, easy thing to wear in the fall. And I love that. Another thing I like to do um, in the fall and another kind of go-to pattern that I have is the Chicago. So one great way to wear the Chicago is over a tunic. And this is one of the outfits that I love to wear. Throw the Chicago over the lengthened ET, add a pair of leggings, add a pair of helixes. Um, since they're a slim fitted pant, I think that that's a really good sleek option that you can wear this fall. I like to have go-to outfits and, um, and one of the ways I can easily get dressed in the morning is to have those go-to outfits. And so I think that um, this combination, um, especially this time of year, you can just throw on a jacket and I think you look really refined that way. So that's the ET. I'm wearing the ET. So there's, um, so um, I can explain what I have on then. Um, so the ET on right here, this is straight from the pattern. So there's no alterations done to this. And then I'm wearing it uh, with the West End pants. The West End is another pattern that is my go-to. Um, I love the West End. I like the way they fit in the hips and in through the waist. I don't have to do any alterations. Um, because of the ease in through the hips, I don't have to do any of those alterations. Um, I do have fuller hips, and so um, I like a pant that has a lot of ease in it, um, so I don't have to worry about, um, worry about fitting my hips as much. 
So I do tend to gravitate towards the west ends for my frame. Um, in this instance, I decided to lengthen them. There's a lot of um, wide leg, full length pants in ready to wear right now, which I really love. Um, I think you can wear them throughout all seasons, depending on what shoes you decide to wear them with. So um, I made some. I uh, lengthened the pattern six inches in order to get this look. And I love it. I think they're just really easy to wear and really comfortable to wear. Um, I made a black pair and I made a white pair, actually off-white, um, which I love. And I'm going to take these into fall. Um, I know that some people may disagree with wearing the off-white pants in the fall, but I think you see, you're seeing that a lot. You're seeing it paired um, in the opposite. You're seeing the white on the bottom and the black on the top. Um, and I think it's an easy way to transition summer to fall. Um, add a pair of ballet flats to it, maybe add a chunky, colorful necklace, and I think you look really sophisticated. So again, long, six inches longer West End pants. So we were talking about the ET as a tunic. Here's another tunic option that I really love. The Florence, uh, I think it has a nice length for me. Um, again, there's no alterations that I have to do on the Florence, so that makes it really easy. Um, I think it fits me really well in the shoulders. Um, the shoulders are one of my problem areas or one of the areas that I always have to double check on a pattern to make sure it fits. I have really broad shoulders. I have broad shoulders and it, um, and it affects the front and the back of my patterns typically. Um, so that's one thing I always have to watch out for. But with the Florence, with the ET, I don't have to worry about that as much. What size do you normally wear? Um, what size do I wear? Normally I wear a medium. Um, in certain patterns I do wear a large. Um, later I'm gonna show you the edge water dress and I do make a large in that. Um, but otherwise, um, I make a medium or uh, the ET, since we have some different sizing on that, I make a two and a half. Oh, okay. And I'm going to pull back again just to show your pants, if that's okay. Because mm -hmm. they're great pants. <laughs> okay. So Florence, um, I would wear the Florence with a legging or a helix pants, something slim on the bottom, even maybe a really drapey Hudson pant would be nice, but I love the, I love the Florence. <clears throat> Another pattern that I really love, um, I think I love to wear dresses. I think um, the great thing about dresses is sometimes you don't have to worry about the length as much as you would with a pant and getting that just right length. Um, there isn't usually a lot of fitting involved with a dress, um, especially if you're making some of these fuller dresses. So um, one of my favorite patterns that we have, uh, favorite dress patterns, is the Memphis. Um, the Memphis has a great fit in through the shoulders um, in the medium, so I don't have to worry about fit with that. It has a nice long sleeve, but also a sleeve that you can easily shorten depending on what time of year you want to wear it. And then one thing I love, you know, I mentioned that I had fuller hips. Well, with the Memphis, I don't have to worry about, again, worry about fitting the hips. I can just um, have a fuller dress and then the fabric can just flow. So I think that's one really important thing. Um, I have, you know, fuller hips, so I want to make sure I have enough ease there. Um, the last thing I want is it for it to pull and be too tight across my hips. So a fuller dress like the Memphis that's fitted at the top and fuller at the bottom is a great option. Here's another Memphis. This is in just a solid wool jersey, which I think is really elegant. Um, I love, I gravitate towards solid colors and textures and stripes. And so I think just a simple, solid knit Memphis is really beautiful. And then I think it, it kind of is very slimming. It's very slimming when you're just using a solid fabric. One of our newer patterns is the Edgewater dress. 
I really love the Edgewater for myself. I love the length of it. It's a really good length for me. Um, it hits at, I'd say it's a longer midi. It's not quite to my ankle. There is a, it's a couple inches above my ankle. So I think that that's um, really great. I think it's nice when you can still show off your ankles. That's a slim part of your body. Um, so I don't have to worry about fitting at the shoulders again. Um, it's a nice sleeve length. It's fitted in through the waist, so it accentuates the waist or creates a waist. And then it's a little fuller at the hips and down through the hem. And I think this is one um, that you can really play with the textures, which I love. So you can have a couple different hues of the same, you know, mauve pink, and then the back is a rib knit in a similar color. So that's another way to use solid colors but have different textures and slightly different hues, which I think is really slimming. This is one also I think I would probably lengthen the sleeve just a little bit. Um, I think it lends itself to having a little bit longer sleeve as well. So I think the next time I make it, I'm gonna make it with a longer sleeve. <clears throat> Again, more dresses because um, dresses um, are just so easy to throw on. Again, I don't really like to think about what I wear in the morning. Um, I wish I had that kind of brain where I just want to be extremely creative in the morning and spend all this time getting dressed, but I don't like to. Um, so I want something that's easy and stylish at the same time. So that's why dresses are my go-to. So this is the Cityscapes dress. The Cityscapes is fitted in through the shoulders, has a nice slim sleeve, it's fitted at the waist, and then it balloons out at the bottom with darts, and then it has a narrower hem. And then another one that I made is sh a little bit shorter, more of a midi length, which I think is really flattering. Stripes, I love stripes. Um, I think this is, um, reads more like a solid, yet it's really sophisticated in the stripe. So I think you can do the calf length as well as the fuller length. And this is also one that you can shorten even more and it's extremely flattering. So I think it's one where you can shorten it to whatever length is good for you. Um, it lends itself to that. All right, another pattern that I love is the Alex. So the Alex, perfect for this time of year. It has a taller cowl neck, long sleeves, fitted at the shoulder. Again, I don't have to make any adjustments to the Alex. Um, it has an A-line shape. It has this great wedge in the center. And then it has gathering at the neckline. If you can see that but just has a few touches of detail that I think make it really sophisticated. And what I did, again, back to the dresses, I lengthened it. Lengthened it into a dress. The dress hits to my knee in the center. And this is a fun one that you can mix and match your fabrics. Um, again, back to you know, the solid color, but having different textures. So this piece in here is a sheer knit that I've um, used the, the knit of the entire garment. I um, used it in the back and then put the sheer knit on top. Beautiful color for this time of year. And again, you can lengthen this to whatever length is flattering on you, whatever height you are. Um, and it has just a nice A-line shape, which I think could be flattering on a lot of people. So I've talked a lot about patterns that fit me straight out of the box. You know, I don't have to do any alterations on them, um, but that's not always the case. Um, you can't always have a pattern that fits you perfectly all the time. So, um, some of my common uh, 
things that I need to do, alterations that I need to do to patterns, are broad shoulder and lengthening. Um, there are a few patterns, pants patterns, that I don't have to lengthen, um, but sometimes that's just based on um, my preference. But a lot of them I do have to lengthen. Um, the Picasso, I have to lengthen those quite a bit. Um, I don't have to lengthen the West Ends. Uh, the Hudson's, I have to lengthen. So um, those are, you know, even if I um, can't make it straight out of the envelope, and I still love the style, there are certain things I need to do. So a couple patterns that I know I always need to alter are the Swing Tee and the Berwick. Um, the Berwick has really narrow shoulders for me, um, so probably just average shoulders. Um, so I always have to either make an extra large, which I don't mind because I think it, then it has an oversized feel. But if I want it to fit like the pattern was intended, I need to broaden the shoulders. Same with the swing tee. I always have to broaden the shoulders. Again, they're narrow, which is great for a lot of people, but that doesn't work for me. So I always need to increase the shoulder length at least half an inch, sometimes three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, can you see that, Betsy? Yeah. Bring it back a little bit. There we go. All right. So if you're doing a broad shoulder adjustment, that means that you need more length at your shoulder seam. So you need more length on your shoulder. And so on a pattern piece, this is a, just a generic pattern piece, but if you need more length here, here's where you're going to increase it. So I've increased it three quarters of an inch on this example. And the first step is you're going to want to trace the original arm's eye. So if you're tracing the arm's eye, do it on a separate piece of paper, like a separate piece of tissue paper. Trace the arm's eye, make sure to include the notch, and then put Put a dot, put a dot at the top and at the bottom. I think that that's helpful. And then you have your original pattern piece and you're gonna measure out the three quarters of an inch on the top. And then you're gonna place that original arm's eye and match up those dots. Match up the three quarter inch mark here at the top and then you're going to shift it so that your bottom dot is lining up with your side seam. And then you're going to trace that original shape, but you're creating a new line that has increased the length of your shoulder. So the red line is your new arm's eye shape. And that's it. Cool. Well, we've got some questions for you. Let me center you back in here. And All right. Questions, talk. questions. All right. Um, what is the difference in fit between broad shoulder adjustment and um, adding to a back adjustment? The broad shoulder adjustment um, is just increasing the length of your shoulder seam. So it's not adjusting anything that's fitting in the back. It's just about the length. So from um, your neck point to your shoulder point, I always have to increase that length. Um, so a lot of people have to do narrow shoulder adjustments, mm -hmm. myself included. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of wondered how to do that. It's, it's pretty much the same right um adjustment but opposite so why right so that? if you have to do a narrow shoulder adjustment you're essentially doing the same technique you're just shifting it the other direction mm -hmm. so instead of adding on that three quarters of an inch you would be taking it off so you would measure from the original on the original pattern you would measure from this point in the three quarters of an inch or whatever you need and then, so you're shifting this original piece, the original arm's eye, 
the other direction. Oops. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. So not only does it look differently here because you're shifting it in or you're, you're starting it in from your original um, point, it also changes here. So instead of it going down on the side seam, it's going to go up. No, that's probably really hard to see. Yeah, let me try to get in a little bit closer here. But instead of the, the new dot being down here, it's going to be up. And then you just retrace everything. And again, right, you retrace it. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's just the, the same technique in reverse. And I think that um, that's one of the many great techniques that we teach in our fashion fitting encyclopedia. Um, it has a narrow shoulder adjustment and a broad shoulder adjustment instructions. So it teaches you or gives you some examples of what a pattern looks like and then gives you some text to help you. So this is a great resource on fitting. I think everyone should have it. it um, even if you're doing just minor adjustments like we're talking about here, you, can, you know you can always have your resource, open it up, because um, I have a hard time remembering it. Each time I'm like, okay, now how do I do that adjustment? If you have a resource, you can open the book up and find the technique that you need. So, great resource. Can you tell me what your Chicago jacket and your West End pants are made of? What of course. Fabric? So, um, the West End pants that I have on are made of a black linen. Um, the other West Ends that I showed were an off-white linen, so 100% linen, uh, a nice medium weight, um, which gives them a good heavy drape, very comfortable. And then the Chicago jacket is made out of a ponte. I've actually made um, another ponte Chicago as well, and um, it's just they're really comfortable. I love the look of a blazer or a collared jacket but sometimes I don't always like it to be so binding. So I love the option of using a ponte. How does the shoulder slash sleeve draft of the ET compare to the E-dress and Anne's tank that you can add the, card, the Anne's cardigan sleeve to? I think they want to know if you can switch those sleeves around. So you said the ET, the, the Anne's cardigan. Mm -hmm. The sleeve of the ET versus, you know how on the E-dress and the Anne's tank and cardigan, you can play with mm -hmm. those sleeves. Does the ET fit into that mix? We haven't tried putting those sleeves on the ET. Um, that is a separate um, draft. So it would be one of those things where you would just have to try. Um, that's how we figured it out with the Anne's cardigan and the um, E-dress. So I think you would just have to, to try and see. Um, I don't know if you're wondering that because you want to know if you would do the exact same adjustments across the board. Because um, I know that um, the adjustments, like the, the Anne's cardigan and the E-dress, um, I don't have to make any adjustments at the shoulder either. Um, so they do have a similar fit in that the shoulders and the sleeves. Okay, um, how would you make a three-quarter length sleeve for the Edgewater? Um, the Edgewater, it comes with a short sleeve. Um, the Edgewater, interesting, um, the Edgewater is actually the top portion of the Edgewater dress is the ET. Ooh. So that goes back to the previous question. <laughs> so um, so the, um, we do talk about how you lengthen the sleeve of the ET. Um, so you would do the same on the Edgewater dress. Um, the biggest thing I think about lengthening sleeves is um, figuring out where you want the sleeve to hit and where and how big of a circumference you need at the bottom hem. Everybody's gonna be different. And um, you're gonna measure from your shoulder point down to that hem where you want it to stop. And the shoulder point is the dot at the top of the sleeve. So you're gonna measure down and mark that. Take that circumference that you want. 
and that will be the um, width at the bottom of the sleeve. And then you connect from the top of the sleeve or the bottom of the arm's eye down to the hem. Um, you can do a straight line or you can give it a little bit of a curve. We like to give it a little bit of a curve typically because it just gives it a nice shape, makes it a little bit more fitted. Um, and I think that that'll give you a nice sleeve no matter if you're gonna lengthen it um, three quarter or full length. It's um, a pretty simple way to lengthen a sleeve. Um, well then how did you lengthen the Alex top? The Alex, oh, the Alex into the, the bottom hem. Yep. I was thinking the sleeve. because Oh, sorry. <laughs> it is a long sleeve. <laughs> into the dress. Which is another good point. Take a long sleeve that you love and, um, and you can always use that width and that fit in through the body of the sleeve on another pattern. Um, the Alex, how did I lengthen the Alex? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> So I used the same width under the arm and at the waist. And, um, and then there's lengthening and shortening lines on the pattern. So I used that to lengthen it because I knew I wanted to have the same width at the bottom um, of the dress as you would with the top. I didn't feel like it needed any more fullness. So that's um, one reason to use your lengthen and shortening lines versus adding it onto the bottom of a pattern because you can retain that circumference at the bottom. So um, I don't remember the exact measurements. I knew that was going to be a question. It looks like it might be six to eight inches. Can you show the back of that dress, please? Yes. All right. So it has that great, I love the gathering here. I think that's just a really neat detail and then the wedge in the front. But otherwise, it's a very simple, very simple pattern, just with a few added details. All right, I think that is it. Should we go over the, fa uh, the fabrics? Yeah, show your fabrics. All right. So not only did Betsy and I want to show you the patterns that we love, um, we also wanted to show you that the, the fabrics that we're loving right now, um, like Betsy talked about how we are getting so much fabric in. So these are some that just really stood out to us. So for me, this is a 100% rayon print. Um, yes, 100% viscose. I think I love this, I love geometrics. So I love this print. I think it would make a great Florence. It has a really, really nice heavy drape. I think that would look really nice um, at, with the tucks on the Florence. I think, and that's a beautiful, beautiful color. This is a cotton knit, 95 organic cotton, five elastane. And this is a great weight as well. It has good stability. It's a beautiful color. And it has this leaf print. Yeah, I'll come in. Wanna... Okay. It's like a leaf texture. Mm -hmm. I think that's just, I love that. So this is a jacquard knit. So this is knitted into the fabric. This is just beautiful. I love that. I think this would make um, we talked about the Chicago and a Ponte knit. I think this would make a beautiful Chicago. Again, it's solid, but it has texture. I love that. Um, I think it would also be great in an Edgewater dress, mixing with other colors or same color and different textures. Uh, a Memphis would be really nice as well, an ET. I love making an ET out of a medium weight structured knit, which is what I have on. Um, this is a ruched knit coffee brown. I think this is really nice. It doesn't say what it's made out of. We did not get that information. We did not get that, okay. <laughs> but beautiful nonetheless. Um, I love the ruched texture. It's a great fall color. This would make a great ET. Um, this would make yeah, ET, swing, T, um, you could do, it could be part of the Memphis dress, maybe the, the yoke in the back, 
maybe a sleeve on a garment so you'd have that great you know fullness in the sleeve i think that would be really nice um this dot i actually thought of betsy when we ordered this because hmm. she's a polka dot fan um, but i love the rich uh, green with the black dot i think that that's fantastic i'd actually pair these three together the floral and then the stripe at the bottom I think that would make a beautiful Edgewater dress, Memphis dress, um, ET where you have one fabric on the front, another fabric for the sleeves, and then another fabric for the back. I think that's really fun. Um, this is 92 rayon and 8% spandex. That's really wide at 63 wide, which is always nice. Then this is a cotton knit. I love our cotton knits. I love how um, they're kind of a light to medium weight, very stable, um, great for ETs or dresses. I love, have, I love making dresses out of something really stable and light to medium weight or medium weight. I like the thickness of that. I like the way that feels on the body. So I think our cotton knits are perfect for that. And these are, I believe it's 90, I think they're 95 cotton, 5% spandex, but great greens and golds a little kind of darker peach it's a it's a beautiful beautiful floral that's perfect for fall and then this bottom one i believe it's a rayon 92 rayon eight percent lycra and it's a black stripe with a cranberry heathered stripe going through it. I'd say the black is maybe three quarters of an inch and then a three eighths of an inch on the cranberry. Again, a nice structure, light to medium weight knit, perfect for um, any of the patterns I've talked about, ET, swing tee, um, all the dresses. So I'm gonna do a close up on the ruched fabric. Mm -hmm. So oh, I kind of have to go at an angle here. I think you can see it fairly well. It's really neat. I yeah. love the texture. Very unusual. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. So those are the ones that I picked for our promotions as, um, and also the black and off-white linen as well. Um, we don't have those rolls up here, but those are also on promotion this week. So any other questions? What type of knit did you use for the Alex dress? The Alex dress is a rayon knit. Rayon spandex blend. Um, I think this burnout, I, th I think it was a poly blend of some sort, but the rest of it's rayon spandex. Again, that light to, to medium weight knit. That's all yes. I've got for questions. All right. Well, I'm going to, Betsy is going to take over. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to pull this back a little okay. bit. I think I've got it. All right. Okay, so um, like I said, the, the impetus for this week's Facebook Live is that we get a lot of questions, and I get a lot of questions about what patterns fit me. I am five foot tall, um, and our patterns are kind of like Linda is our sample size. Let's say that. And what is she, five six, five eight? Well, I'd say more five six, five seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. five six, five seven. So. That's a six to seven inch difference, which is pretty, pretty big. <laughs> um, of course, all the patterns are graded, so the sizes are graded, so not everything is gonna be to fit her. Um, but what I wanted to do was show the patterns that fit me out of the box, as Erin did, um, and then also talk about some patterns that don't and like what I do to make them fit me. Um, so the first thing that I do, and I think you guys should do as well, is figure out your measurements. It's a drag, no one wants to know it, but scientifically this will help you so better. Um, I would say uh, you should probably measure yourself maybe once a year because bodies change, but having your measurements is an important step because then you know how um, your body is compared to the pattern. And how do you do that? You look at the finish measurements. Now, most of our new patterns will have the finish measurements listed. Some of our old patterns don't. But 
you can figure it out. <laughs> All you have to do to find finished measurements is to measure the pattern and remove the seam allowance. So um, take away the seam allowance and that's the finished measurement. When you know those two measurements, then you can figure out what kind of ease you like, what kind of style it's gonna, like what the style is gonna be on you. So if you prefer things slimmer and there's six inches of ease in a shirt, maybe you don't want that. <laughs> um, so you want to look for either a slimmer style or you want to know how to take it in. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but I can't emphasize the measuring enough. That would really help both your body and the patterns. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the mix it top. I often look for just like a simple top. I like to sew with wovens, so I like an easy woven top as opposed to like Aaron's ET. Um, and what I found is the mix it top. Now, this one is a medium, but I sew an extra small. And I can do it right out of the package, I don't have to do anything to it. Um, it's a little bit of a slimmer cut than some of our more voluminous patterns. It does have a bust start. I know a lot of people ask about what patterns have bust starts. This one does have it. Um, it's got this adorable stand-up collar and this little um, button and loop. And that is really cute. I have a photo, let me find it, of me in the mix-it top, which I'm sure you're all dying to see. <laughs> But as you can see, what fits really well for me are the shoulders, and that's kind of where I start. Like, if the shoulders fit, then I work my way down from there. If they don't, on some patterns I'll do a narrow shoulder adjustment, but this one is right out of the box. But sometimes, I don't want to fuss with the collar, so I did want to show you one variation, and you've seen it before, but I do think it's worth bringing back. You have to ignore the puffy sleeves. That's, that's a whole other thing. But the blue top is the mix it top, and then I put on the Eureka neckline. And I just basically laid one pattern over the other, um, evened up the shoulders, and then cut the pattern to have this neckline. And what this is for me is a um, easy throw on top that's somewhat fitted and I can make it in a woven. So that works for me. Another one that I wanted to talk about is the Florence, which is what I have on. Now Erin um, also said that she likes to wear the Florence. Um, and it's, it's a kind of a go-to for me because again, the shoulders fit me really well. The ends of the shoulders fit right where they're supposed to in that little notchy curve. When you, when you raise and lower your arms. Um, it is a voluminous top, and Erin can totally rock the voluminous top. And I can too sometimes, but I also, if I'm not feeling voluminous, I just throw on a belt. So this is a little ribbon that I just pop on. And that's something too, you can take a larger scale pattern and do a really simple fix with just throwing on a belt. Um, someone had asked about the back of the Florence, so I want to show you that. It's got a band with buttons down the back. That's purely decorative. Um, you're not buttoning up the back of the, of the shirt. It's just for fun. You don't have to put it on there, but it's kind of nice. Um, because the Florence fits me so well, I use it as a base for other variations, including a dress. This is a super simple dress. It is the Florence, so my shoulders fit, the collar and sand fits, everything up here is where it's supposed to be, and then I just lengthened it. Can you see it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I didn't take it in any. And I didn't put in, it's got these little flaps. I didn't put the flaps, I just lengthened it and let it kind of balloon out in its lantern shape. But what I did, because I didn't want it to be so voluminous on me, is add a back belt. Um, so the front 
fits a little bit nicer for me. And then actually the back has a really lovely drape because it gathers all that volume together. So that's really pretty. I added puffy sleeves. That was just fun, just for fun. Pants, I get a lot of question about pants. Um, what pants can I wear if I'm very short or petite? I have two go-tos in our line. I have the West End pants, which I have here out of a lightweight cotton. They are an elastic waist pants. I tend to hem them so that they are about an inch above my ankle because proportionally for my build, I feel like seeing that thinner ankle area offsets the volume of the pants. Um, so to get that, I've got about a two inch hem. I've also done shorter versions. You can see in this picture that I also have done like three to four inches above my ankle. And to do that, I don't shorten the pants. I just cut off the bottom because the West ends are straight. You can do that. You do it from the hem. Another pant that I would suggest for petites is the Picasso pant. These are my Picasso pants. They're extra small. Everything I make is extra small. Um, out of the box. I didn't have to do anything. And they fit there-ish. Oh, you can see. <laughs> um, what, two inches above the ankle-ish? And one advantage of the Picasso pant is that it has this flat front. So it does have an elastic waist, but in the instructions it tells you how to do this flat front so you don't have the volume in the front. And that is something you can do on other elastic waist pants. This one I added a ribbon drawstring. But you could do that flat front on the West Ends so you don't have the puff in front. And that is kind of helpful. Um, let's see. So the Memphis Aaron brought up. I'll just get one out so you can see it again. And I have a lot of questions about the Memphis and the Edgewater. Like, can people? the short wear at the Memphis or the Edgewater. And I am here to tell you that you can. It does look like quite a voluminous dress, and it is. It's got this whole side pocket. But again, once you have the shoulders set, it's pretty fitted up here, and then you get the volume. So I make sure my shoulders fit. I don't think I have to do an adjustment on it, but um, it's been a while since I made it, so I can't, can't say for sure, but I think out of the box, the extra small shoulders fit me okay. But then I do shorten it, um, and I shorten it so that the short side is just under my knee, and then whatever the long side, however that does for that. Um, there are lengthened and shortened lines on the pattern that you can use, but you can also be sneaky and just not put on the bottom band. So if you're looking for an easy way to wear the Memphis and shorten it, you can just leave off the bottom band. Um, the same with the Edgewater, I would just shorten it to my preferred length. Um, again, I stick with like ankle or around the knee because your legs kind of go in there and so it, it, it's like a thinner spot. Um, Mid-calf does not work for me. <laughs> um, in terms of voluminous clothing, it's not that I don't like it. I do wear kind of oversized drapey clothing. I love the chateau coat. You've seen this from me many times. Um, but I look for the right fabric for it. So for me, the right fabric for something um, that's gonna be kind of flowing around me is drapey. I want a drapier fabric. So like this boucle, is super drapey and it's gonna skim your body. When I do the Memphis, I'll do a very drapey ponte. And again, it just kind of falls along your body. I do have a Chateau coat, actually I think we showed it last week, um, that I made out of a vintage quilt. And that keeps the shape a little bit more, so when it's on me, like 
you can see the jacket design a little bit more. So that's something to think about. If you like that, you know, I don't wear it all the time, but I do wear it. But I tend to go for something that just flows a little bit more. Um, one more thing. Well, maybe not one more thing. <laughs> uh, the splice top is a go-to for me as well. This is a large, so this is not mine. Um, and it's also a really great and easy lengthen into a dress because I wear a lot of dresses. But sometimes um, it's too boxy. Like I find something to be too boxy is just not something I would wear a lot. So I want to bring it in a little bit. And the cottage shirt is one of those times. Oh, do you need help? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So the cottage shirt is a great shirt. It's a camp shirt. I wear an extra small. This is an extra small cottage shirt. Um, pretty much out of the box. I haven't done any fitting alterations to it. Although I did sew it up the front because I didn't feel like putting buttons in. So <laughs> that is one thing. Um, but for me, particularly in this fabric, which is kind of like a medium weight quilting knit, it's going to be too boxy for my frame for what I like. Somebody else might like that and that's fine. So what I did for my cottage shirt, and this is a similar fabric, is I took out width. So this is also an extra small and I just wanted to show you um, the difference. I think I took out four inches, which is quite a bit, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more fitted. Um, it's not hard to do and I wanna show you how to do that. So, thank you, Erin. Erin set up my board for me. Whoa. Can you see that? Yes, I'm gonna get a different angle. Okay. Okay, and I can adjust where needed. Okay, so this is the cottage shirt front. Um, and this is a technique I will use on pretty much any shirt that's too wide. And what I'm gonna do is find the notch in the shoulder. Because what I want to do is take out the width in the shoulder section. You might think if you want to take out width that you go from the side seam or the center front, but that's going to cause problems. <laughs> so if you go from like the shoulder section, you're not messing with the collar and stand, you're not messing with the center front, and you're not messing with the sleeve. And those are things that if you can avoid, I would totally avoid those. Um, so what I do is I look for the notch in the shoulder, and sorry, this is a much used pattern, so it's a little crinkly. But I start at the shoulder notch, draw a straight line down the body. Then I measure over towards the side seam, however much I want. I did an inch here, just for practical purposes. Um, and draw a straight line down. And then all you have to do is pinch your pattern together so that you are lining up your two red lines. What you see is an overlap of it should be a half an inch and that's going to take an inch out of this pattern. If you are cutting single layer, you need to remember to do both sides. <laughs> um, the other thing you need to do is remember to do the back, because in this case, what you do to the front, you must do to the back. So here's the back yoke for the cottage shirt. And again, I started at the notch and then went over towards the side seam. The other thing about starting towards the notch is that it makes it easy for you to still be able to match the shoulder seams because you have a notch, you know where it's supposed to be, you can get those pattern pieces together. But before you cut out, measure your newly folded pattern and make sure those measurements match. <laughs> you don't want anything off there. So. Because the cottage shirt has a back yoke, you have to do one more. 
and that is just on the back. And it's just the same thing. Now, you might be tempted to do it on the fold. And it was funny because I was first doing this and I thought, am I making it more difficult? And so I took it off the fold and Aaron was like, you can't do that. <laughs> and I thought, well, I was, thought I was being, making it easier for everybody, but in fact, I was right the first time. So again, you find your notch, take it out and take out the fabric from the side seam. Because again, you still got your notch and you can still um, put everything together that way. If you do it in the sides or the center, everything's gonna go willy-nilly and it's gonna be trickier. But this is super easy. I do it quite a bit for anything that just seems a little too boxy for me. So what if your shoulder seam doesn't have a notch? If your shoulder seam doesn't have a notch, I will um, measure it and find the center on the front and the back and go from there. What if you don't want to narrow the shoulders? How would you take width out of the body? Oh, interesting. Okay, so let me take that off. Well, how I would do it, and perhaps how Linda will say to do it when we get it back, is maybe different, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but I have, in my time, basically taken a dart out of the fabric. So um, let's say I would measure down, I don't know. If, if the arm's eye is fine, I would probably measure down under the arm's eye, but if you do need to take it out from up top, you can take it a little bit higher, but I would take a dart out of the pattern. This is not going well, but, um, no, oh, come on. So that however much you want to take out, it still goes, evens out to the original pattern on top. Because then you're not adjusting the shoulder seam. Erin, thoughts on that? I've never had to do that. So she's I think that's a great alternative. Well, she's never had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like a great alternative. But yeah, so that's what uh -huh. I do. I just kind of dart the pattern and then cut it from there. And I think like your instances, these are really boxy shirts that you typically are trying to make narrower. Yeah, so, you know, narrowing those shoulders on something like the cottage isn't going to be as big of a deal, right. I think. Or um, does that affect the bust at all when you, do you still find like you have enough room in the bust when you, when you narrow it? Um, well, on, on the cottage, yes, of course. So mm -hmm. if you're doing something that is a little bit slimmer than the cottage and you just need to take like a little bit out, that's when you got to measure again. So you have to measure your finished bust measurement on your pattern. So if you take the dart out before you cut out your fabric, <laughs> um, measure the bust and make sure that is what's going to work for you. Make sure it has enough ease to fit your bust. If you take a dart, does that affect the straight of grain? Um, I think it would. Well, you would have to adjust the pattern so that the pattern is on the straight of grain. Because if you take a, if you zhuzh this, then like that straight of grain is off. So you would have to find an edge. I mean, most patterns have a straight edge and then work from there. And I think when you're doing that dart, it's difficult to just do it on camera. But I think if you're doing the yeah. dart, it's more, it's going to go straight down. It's not yeah, going to go as an angle. Yeah, it's not going to go at an angle. I think it's just, it, it's hard to do that yes. on if camera. If you did it so, on top of it and you weren't fumbling vertically, you would, right. you would do straight down. Um, but just, it's just a little tricky it's, to it's do. It's tricky yeah, to do like it on this. camera. Kind of like realize, this. Yeah, the board is also at my height. So yeah. I didn't make that <laughs> exactly. easy for you. I apologize. Yeah. No, you're fine. <laughs> But, yeah, you wouldn't do it in, sorry, at an angle, you would do straight down. But you just want to, mm -hmm. you know, make it so that it gradually gets into the fabric you need to take out. And I wouldn't do, in that instance, you're not going to take a lot out with that mm -mm. alteration. Mm -mm. Um, so um, I think if you're wanting to take a lot out, it's going to be in a more boxy shape where you don't have to because you don't want to manipulate the grain i mean that just makes it so complicated yeah. so i think in in the easiest of instances 
you're, you're working with a boxy shape yeah. to try and narrow it so yeah. you wouldn't have these. Yeah. This, these are instances with a boxy pattern. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do the dart, I don't think you're taking out much more than maybe, maybe half an inch to an inch, maybe an mm. inch. You might be taking out an inch down here, but because you have to grade it into that dart, you're not really taking that much out up here. Because mm -hmm. um, if you did, it would be all sorts of funny mm -hmm. up top. If you need to take that much out of a pattern, you probably can just wear the smaller size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're probably going to want to, yeah, change your right. size. <laughs> if yeah. you're taking that yeah. much out, that, change your that's size. What I think. Or this, is, this is more for boxy things or things yeah. that you just need, to, just need to tweak just a little bit, and it's not just about the shoulder. You just want to take everything in just hair mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. in the case of that cottage shirt quite a bit. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> Yeah. If you're doing too much, that might not be the pattern for you. Yeah, and that is the thing too. You know, sometimes patterns just aren't your style. I was thinking, I'm going to put this away. When Erin was showing her West Ends and um, her boxy ETs, how I feel like she can get away with the volume on volume, whereas I have to do, um, take it in a little bit. So. The other thing is, though, if that's your style and you're short, go for it. If you want volume, run with it. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I had one other jacket that I wanted to show you that I really like as an out-of-the-box pattern, and that is the sterling jacket. Um, again, it fits me really well. You don't have to do much to it. And it's really cute. So I would check that out. Oh, I was going to say about the cottage shirt, um, if I were making it in a rayon or something that had a lot of drape to it, maybe I wouldn't take out that extra fabric. Um, so consider fabrication as well. Because I've had so many people ask me about this and because I actually had quite a long list of patterns that I work from that I don't have to do much to. I put together a tutorial. Get ready. It's got a lot of pictures of me in it. <laughs> um, Adorable pictures yeah, of you. I don't know about that, but so it is on the website. It is under the Facebook category for today, and there is a link from the homepage to it. It says Shop Linda's Video. And it is a tutorial called Patterns for Petite Frames. And it goes through a long list of the patterns I like. You can see photos of me with the patterns. And then they also say what size I'm wearing, what the fabric is, and what, if any, adjustments that I make. And it also contains the tutorial for taking out the width that I just showed you with the cottage shirt. This is free. You can download it enjoy it um, use it at your leisure so uh, keep an eye out for that I think that's it you got any um, questions let's take some questions okay. all right um, does the Picasso pant have pockets the Picasso pant does not have pockets but we have discussed ways to put them in I think somewhere there might be a video where we show how to do that I will dig into that and um, post the link. Can you lengthen the mix it tops sleeves? Can you lengthen the mix it top sleeves? I think so. Um, hold on. Nope, not you. Yeah, so it's a cap sleeve, um, but you can lengthen it. It's got a bottom. so. You would do it as you would do any other sleeve, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could compare it with the other mix it uh, sleeves in the envelope because it does come with a shirt. Right. Um, so you could um, use that, use as, a that guide. as a guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you put on your chateau? I can put on my chateau. Here it is. 
I think it's a fine length for me. And I like the way it flows. I wear it quite a bit. Um, can I ask what size Betsy would be in ready to wear? I sew for a five foot tall daughter and would love a size comparison so I can use my sewing workshop patterns for her too. Sure, so I, you know, ready to wear is different with every, even within brands, but I normally wear like two, four. What was the pattern um, with, that's black with flowers? I think it was the from oh, cottage, um, maybe? I don't the pattern that was black with flowers, this is the cottage shirt. Are you going through? Okay. <laughs> A lot of comments. <laughs> Um, what's the best way to shorten a sleeve? I'm 4'11 and the sleeves are always too long. Okay, so the best way to shorten a sleeve when they're too long. Um, if there are not any obvious length and shortened lines on the sleeve, I will measure down to the middle. If it's a straight sleeve and then just kind of do that same technique and like take a tuck up. Um, or depending on the shape of the sleeve, you can just cut it off at the hem. But if, if it's got a cuff or if it has a shape, I think you want to do the center or find the place that's like straight and then tuck it from there. So you're not adjusting the shape of the sleeve. Uh, there's a question, couple questions for me. Oh, questions one, for Erin. One about the cityscapes and one about the shoulder, broadening shoulders. Go I guess on. I can come around. And, um, so the f um, first one was about the cityscapes and how did I shorten it? So on the cityscapes, it has um, the way it's shaped. It's shaped by darts. And so there's a couple different things you can do. You can just cut it off. Um, we do have uh, a dress. I can't remember if it was intentional or not, actually, but it was just cut off um, at the end of one of the section of darts. And so it's more of an A-line shape. It's um, fitted in through the waist, and then it just flares out, kind of a fit and flare um, style dress. And so that's one option if you just want to have a simple, uh, more traditional looking dress, you can just cut it off. Um, but if you want to shorten it and keep this shape, you would want to shorten it in this area here. You wouldn't want to shorten it at the bottom because then you're going to lose the shape. So you're going to want to shorten it in through here. And then the other question was about um, the shoulder length. They wanted to know where the, the end, where, where that shoulder point is. And Betsy mentioned it, but it's that it's your shoulder point. It's on the bone, um, and you can really feel it if you're moving your arms up and down. But um, it's not the end of the shoulder where the um, more of the flesh is. <laughs> um, it's at the bone um, because with your sleeve cap, it's building in that space um, for you know for your shoulder and for your arm. And so you want to use the measurement that goes to the the bone. So. Cool. I think that's it. You want to show your fabric? Oh, fabrics? yes, my fabric. All right. So I think aside from the different um, patterns that we've chosen, there's n no more indicative example of the difference between Aaron and I than these two fabric walls that we chose. I just thought it was funny. Um, so when I go into my fall and winter colors, I like dark teal. I like um, fuchsia cranberry, so I'm kind of moving into that side of, of fabric. At the top here, we have a fantastic brocade. What are you made of? It's a blend. They didn't tell us what it was. Um, it's got this kind of ocean blue background, and if you look closely, you can see that there are roses woven in the fabric. And then as a pop, we've got little red and like tomato-y orange flowers, and 
metallic gold and silver. I was thinking a sterling out of this, but you tell me what you think it would be great in. Um, and what I really like about it is the back. Because it's woven, you get these really fun stripes in the back, metallic, and then the colors, and then the opposite flowers. So I think whatever I make, I'm going to try to use both sides, because I think it's fun. This is a, push this back so you can see it. It is a fabulous large scale kind of tropical leaf linen in, in my fall colors. So we've got the teal, kind of the orange, pink, there's even a light pink. Um, and it's funny because is it, is it a linen for fall? I think it is. You know, that transition time like right now where it is fall but it's also 80 degrees out. So why not wear linen? Um, and that is 100% linen. This lady is 100% cotton. Another large scale floral with a beautiful kind of burgundy base. Then we've got a lipstick red flower with kind of a just a slightly darker than cotton candy pink, teal, and then an off-white small floral. That would be fun as a mix-it top. It would be fun as a Florence top as well. Um, just trying to think, would you, could you do pants out of this? I don't know. What do you think? I like a big, oh. big scale mm -hmm. for a pant. It could be really fun. Maybe Definitely. a West End pant. I think a West End lends itself to a large yeah. print. Yeah. So, um, and this one we might need a close-up of. Mm -hmm. And if you need me to bring it, that's fine. This is a... What are you? You are a viscose crepe. And it's a navy blue background, and it has a small print of bicycles with little flowers in their basket, and then bouquets of flowers scattered across the top. It's a viscose crepe, so it's got a matte finish and just a hint of a texture. It's not super nubby, but it's got a beautiful drape. I mean, I would make that for almost anything. Dresses, tops, really West End pants again. Um, I just think it's a cute print. And because it's smaller and because it's navy, you can mix it with a lot of things. This bottom print is another viscose. And it's just an abstract geometric print. I think it's very kind of mid-century. It's got a real 50s vibe to it, especially with like kind of the sketchy plaids. Um, and really the, the color palette as well, that, that hunter green and the um, like citrine green. If you like green, this is every one that you can imagine. And then what you might not be able to see is that this is like a peachy color. So you have like a little bit of warmth in with all of the, the cool greens. And then a white, pops of white as well. Not on the wall, but... This is another rayon. This is brand new. We just got this in. You will also find it on the What's New section. And for those of you who couldn't find it, I did post a um, link to that in the comments. So um, keep an eye out for that. This rayon is so soft. It's got the most beautiful hand to this fabric. We get this from a company out of England, and we've gotten their cottons before, but this was their first shipment of rayons for us. Beautiful, beautiful rayons. And I love like the vining, um, I looked up this flower, maybe it's a bromeliad, I can't remember. It was a tropical, kind of a stylized take on a tropical flower. And again, it's got my colors, um, the warms and the teals and a little shot of gold there just to, just to pop that in. So that's what I'm thinking of for the fall. Although with all the fabrics that we are getting in, that might change too. Mm -hmm. We can't make something out of everything or I would run out of room in my house. <laughs> so, yeah, and if you have any ideas for what you think I should make out of these, I'm interested to know. Sometimes you get, you get stuck in my own pattern uh, rut, so. But especially this brocade, I'm trying to decide. I'm leaning towards a sterling, but I could be um, convinced otherwise. One great comment on here is um, 
that it's nice to see Betsy choose large prints. I'm very short and grew up staying away from large prints, and I love large prints. Oh. So you want to give your take on large prints? For yeah, petite? so I, I've always, um, I'm sure this will surprise you, but <laughs> I've always dressed a little bit loudly. I've never been afraid of color or print. Um, and I don't have a problem with large prints. Now, I like to mix prints, so I do everything at scale. So if you're gonna have a large print and you wanna do a second one, make sure it's smaller, small, medium, large. You can get all sorts of prints together like that, but um, yeah, no, I think. And if you feel it's too large for your face to have next to your face, go with a wild pant. There's no, no problem with that, or a coat. Um, I love a statement coat with a good print. Um, would you line the navy viscose? Would I line the navy viscose? Um, I did notice that when you hold it up like that, it's a little bit translucent. But, sorry, the air conditioning just went on. <laughs> I hope that's not too loud. Um, it kind of depends on what I was making, but I think generally I probably wouldn't because when it's close to the body, I mean, this is flowing out, so you're getting light on both sides. But hanging down like this, I don't think that it's very translucent, and that's gonna be more of what you see. So I probably wouldn't line it. Um, if you widen the ET, will the collar be less of a turtleneck and more of a cowl? Hmm, that's for you, I think. Um, I think that, um, I think it would be more of a cowl, like you're seeing in the Alex. This is a, has a wider neckline. Uh, it's lower, which I think that would be the, um, the result. If you're lowering it, not just widening it, but if you're lowering it, it is going to turn into more of a cowl because it's going to drape down like it does in the Alex. Um, but since the ET, the ET has a higher neckline, um, it is going to be more of a mock neck, turtleneck. Um, over the cowl. Um, but I think you can, I typically do, um, that's one thing I didn't mention, I do typically widen, slightly widen, and lower the neckline on the ET. This one isn't, but um, traditionally I would go down an inch and make it slightly wider. Um, I think that's uh, more attractive on a broad shoulder um, when the neckline is opened up just a little bit. Um, I don't know if you answered this already, but what size do you wear in the cityscape dress? I wear a medium in the cityscape dress. I tend to wear a medium in most of our garments, um, and except for the Edgewater, I do make the large. It's very fitted in the shoulders and then through the bust and the waist, um, which I think is great depending on what fabric, if you're using a thicker knit. Um, I could stick with the medium, but I do, I like the comfort of the large for the Edgewater. Well, I think that's all of the questions. So I think we are good. We, we, we have gone over quite a bit. We have. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around with us. Yes, so um, let's talk about the sales for this week. Um, so we all the fabrics that we showed, my fabrics here, Betsy's fabrics there, um, all of those are 15% mm -hmm. off. And then the patterns that we put on sale this week are the Alex and Olive. Um, so the, the Alex comes with another top, another knit top, which is really great. The ET, the Florence, the Cityscapes, uh, West End, Mix It, Memphis, Cottage, and Picasso. Yep. That's a lot of patterns. A lot of these we don't put on sale very often, so now's the time to get those. And then the tutorials, and um, we did put the Fitting Shoulders tutorial on sale. Um, that's a great sh um, tutorial, not only for broad shoulders and narrow shoulders, but um, for other types of fitting that you need to have in through the shoulders. The mesh blocked ET tutorial is included. Um, the funny thing is a, a customer emailed me yesterday, Linda D'Amato, and she said, now what is that mesh tutorial? And I had just picked up that garment from our closet and was wanting to show it today. Um, so great minds, Linda. <laughs> and um, so that's on sale. And then uh, the petite styles that uh, Betsy put together, that is free. So it's very generous of you, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what's on sale today.
And then, so don't forget about our So Confident Promotions, the Haiku 2 video that's coming out on Friday. Make sure you get your kits and for the Haiku and the Helix. And, um, and again, I do want to mention, um, if you missed it in the beginning, we do have this black and white gingham in stock again. So if you didn't have a chance to get it with our earlier promotions, it is for sale by the yard. Make a great pair of Picasso pants that you can still wear now. Black and white, doesn't matter the season. So <laughs> All year round. All year round. So All that's... All right. Well, thank you, Erin. And right. thanks for thank everybody you. tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thanks for sticking with us today. Um, and everyone have a good week, and we'll see you next week.